Introduction. Oval Office, The White House, Washington, D.C., October 12, 1939, 10 a.m. The age of mass destruction is about to dawn. What bright idea do you have now? An upbeat Franklin Delano Roosevelt asks Wall Street financier Alexander Sachs, one of his key advisors on the New Deal that lifted America out of the Great Depression. The 46-year-old economist sits on the opposite side of the president's massive wooden desk. FDR was up past midnight, as is his custom. The deep circles under his eyes and his pale skin, resulting from constant exhaustion and too little time spent outdoors, make the president look far older than his 57 years. His health is not enhanced by the camel cigarette he now holds, one of the more than 20 he will smoke today. Sachs chooses his reply carefully. This meeting is so top secret that it will not appear in the official daily log of presidential appointments. Sachs can only hope that it will go better than the hour he spent with Roosevelt yesterday when he labored unsuccessfully to find the right words to describe what could possibly be the greatest single threat to mankind. It has been six weeks since Nazi Germany invaded Poland, beginning what will become known as the Second World War. One month prior, on August 2nd, theoretical physicist Albert Einstein wrote an urgent letter to President Roosevelt warning that it may become possible to set up a nuclear chain reaction in a large mass of uranium. Extremely powerful bombs of a new type may thus be constructed. Einstein is a longtime friend of Roosevelt's, but he felt that sending Alexander Sachs to deliver the letter in person would be the most effective way of getting his point across. But when Sachs finally managed to get an audience with Roosevelt yesterday morning, the pompous financier was unable to articulate his case. Rather than simply reading Einstein's two-page letter aloud, he appeared in the Oval Office with a stack of technical papers detailing America's uranium output and then read from an 800-word summary he had written. Sachs never mentioned that Einstein and other top American scientists believe that the new bombs could obliterate entire cities or that Nazi Germany is currently racing to build such weapons. Roosevelt grew bored as Sachs droned on. With pressing business to address, the president dismissed Sachs, telling him to come back the next day. That time is now. Realizing his mistake, Sachs gets right down to business. As Roosevelt listens attentively, the Wall Street leader reads Einstein's letter aloud. The president may not have appeared to be listening yesterday, but some of the discussion seems to have sunk in. Roosevelt probes Sachs with questions about uranium, the Nazis, and this new bomb. Einstein's letter makes it clear that the Germans have already taken control of a key uranium mine in Czechoslovakia and that scientists at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin are attempting to use this uranium to set up a nuclear chain reaction that could lead to the most lethal bomb in history. Roosevelt has finally heard enough. Alex, he summarizes for the financier, what you are after is to see that the Nazis don't blow us up. Precisely, a relieved Sachs answers. Roosevelt immediately summons his personal secretary, retired U.S. Army General Edwin Pa Watson, into the Oval Office. Pa, Roosevelt orders, this requires action.